Good morning, church. Can you all hear me? Are you sure? I can speak to you in tongues right now. It will be much clearer. You want English? English, please, yeah? Don't worry. As I speak along, it will be clearer and clearer. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Uh, we're here today to, you know, it's a privilege just to gather together and fellowship with the Lord, fellowship in the Word, you know, to celebrate one another. I know many of you are here to um, join in and celebrate with our, with our, our dear brother and sister, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Arthur, even as they dedicate the baby, and that will come um, right after the, the sermon. But we're here to receive the Word of God, amen. And um, I need this message, amen. I have received it, and I know the Lord will be ministering to us. Today, I want to speak on the subject, the authority of the believer. The authority of the, of the believer. Go with me to Luke chapter 10. Luke 10, we pick up from verse 17. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are we there? Luke 10 from um, 17, it says, Then the 70 returned with, a, with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. 18 says, and he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give, no, okay, from heaven. Verse 19, behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all, everyone says all, all. The power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means, nothing shall by any means hit you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice. Why? Because your names are written in heaven. 20. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven. And if that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, is for so it seems good in your sight. Amen. Well, there, there's some, you know, the Christian walk, the walk with God, our life of faith. Now, right now, I, I probably should have opted out to just sit down and then tell Pastor Aaron, Pastor Aaron, you know, you have to step in. I'm here preaching by faith. Amen. Amen. And don't worry, it will get clearer and clearer. Praise God. Because as I speak, the power of God will be moving. Amen. Hallelujah. And our life of faith calls us to follow the Holy Spirit and step out always in faith. You know, it's not enough just to preach faith. We have to also live by faith as well. And as we declare, as we read the Bible and we confess, we also have to act on our faith. Now, Luke 10, 17 to 21 is one of the scriptures that have been a blessing to me down the years. I remember, you know, I was a 17, 18 year old boy, very much new in the faith. And um, I don't know if, you know, or you can relate, but you know when you were sleeping, and then in your sleep, you have this experience of an attack. And then suddenly you cannot talk in your sleep. You know, this is more like a pressing force, you know, and you want to speak, but you cannot speak. You, you cannot move. I don't know if anyone experienced that before in your life. And then I remember, you know, I was very new in the faith, and this thing would be pressed on my chest. I, I, I always wanted to utter the name Jesus, and it was not coming out. In my sleep, it's pressing me. And then eventually the name Jesus will just come out and then boom, nothing will cease. And I remember at 17, 18 years, I will grab my Bible, jump off the bed, and point to Luke 10, 19 especially. And I'll be storming my room. I'm like, boy, 
Behold, Jesus said, He's given me the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hit. And I can go back to sleep, and then nothing will come back again. I'll jump off the bed, grab the Bible, go through that same process. Amen. Time and time and time again. Now, in my dreams, I have the experience where in the dream, I will see this demonic force was chasing, attacking my family. And then in the dream, I'll be, I don't know how to describe it because it's, it's not common to us. I'm running after them, but it's like I'm, I'm running, hopping. It's like I'm running, I'm hopping after them. And obviously, it's no human experience, but in the spirit, you know we fly, amen? It's not only demons that fly, because we are spiritual beings as well. I'm just saying that just to let you know that in our walk of faith and our life of God, we have been authorized. And I was looking at the word authority. It says, so Jesus sent the disciples to go and evangelize, 72 of them, two by two. And then they, they went and they came back. They went to the mission field and the experience was just were all inspiring. You know, they, they preached the gospel. They laid hands on the sick. People were healed. You know, they saw the blind eyes open. God just moved. And I can imagine Peter. I can imagine John. Peter going. Peter and John, I believe they were paired together. Amen. And then Peter says to John, boy, this thing is, is big, you know. What do you think, John? John said, Pete, ah, yes, this, this is the life we're going to live. So they came back, giving the report to the master. Said, Lord, we, we went to the streets, to the synagogue, to the marketplaces, and boy, the things that we saw, just like you told us that will happen. And then as they went on and on, they said, even the demons are subject to us. Now, you need to understand, the revelation of the devil was not, was not clear in the Old Testament, amen? Because they didn't have the authority to deal with the devil in the Old Testament. So in the Old Testament, the devil was still in charge, you know, causing havoc. And so you find out that many things that happen in the Bible, they ascribe all of them to God, whether good or bad. Because to them, God was in control and God has to do everything. But in the sovereignty of God doesn't mean God is is the one who caused the good and the bad. Anyway, and that's why when Jesus was preaching, was healing, and the demons were coming out, the Bible says the they were astonished at his teaching because they saw things they never seen before, demons come out of people. You know, what is this? And the Bible says they were so amazed because he preached for authority. Well, they went and they had the same experience. So they came and they said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us. But in your name, amen. In what name? Jesus. What name? Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So they did what they did what? In that name. And then Jesus spoke these words of power. He said, behold, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. That's good. Then he went on to say, I give you the authority. Everyone say authority. He says, over serpents, over scorpions. And then he says, over all the power, all the power of the enemy, he says, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I know many Christians in their Bible they haven't got this verse in your Bible. I can tell you that. Many of you in your Bible, you don't have these words I just spoke. Because why your experience does not speak of what Jesus is saying. It says, I give you the authority. Now look, in that verse, we have the word authority and we have the word power. So you said, I give you the authority over serpents and scorpions, over all the power. The word authority here in the Greek is the word exousia. Amen? Um, the word exousia means authority. It means dominion. All right? It means supremacy. 
So authority is different. So word authority here, in that same verse 19, when the word um, power was used, or wasn't the word exousia. So behold, I give you the authority, the exousia, over all, over all the serpents, and over all the, not exousia, over all the dunami. So you see, when we say authority, I tell you, we use the word power, right? You know, I tell you, it's interchangeably. But here, there's a distinction. So in the Greek, it is not the word authority is different from the word power here. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you all still here? Amen. So this says, I give you the authority over all the power of the enemy. The word power here is dunamem. So authority is referring to, the, to be authorized to do something. And the power is the ability to perform or to act. Now, this is telling. Because when you look at Acts chapter 1, verse 8, can we have that on the screen? Acts 1, verse 8. Acts 1, verse 8. I want you, I know there's a lot of movement. If you can get seated. And as we're moving, look at me, I'm the one, I'm the one on stage, amen. Praise God. That's one eight. It says, these are the words of Jesus. It says, but he said, but he said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. You shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit, the word power here is the word dunamim. You see? So Jesus was not referring to the exousia. In Luke 10, 19, he said, you shall receive authority. And, you know, we can use the word power for authority. But in this case, he's referring to the supremacy. He's referring to the control, the rule, the dominion. All right? But then in us 1a, he's using the word dunamim. So there's a difference between exousia and dynamic. Dynamic refers to raw power, might, strength. So he said, you shall receive the raw power, the supernatural power, ability of the Holy Spirit. And then you'll be pre- you'll be do, do my work. Now, I'm using that to let us understand that the word dynamic is used of the Holy Spirit as one a, And then the word dynamic is used of the power of all. The devil. So what Jesus is saying is, I give you the authority of our seven scoping over all the dynamic, all the power, the raw power, the raw strength, the raw supernatural ability, because it's all of it, all the power that Satan has, all that Satan can do, his ability, his capacity, his capabilities, all that he can dream of, all his might. All the strength, all the force of the enemy. It says, I give you the authority over all of them. Now, example, let's look at a very small, petite uh, police woman, just for the sake of, you know, the scenario. And she stands at the street, and there's um, uh, an incident on the road. So she's standing there. What, how do we know that she's a police woman? How do you tell that she's a police woman? The uniform, right? Okay. And then she stands there, and then she made that stand. And then there's a huge trap. And then you look through it, and the guy who's driving is a you know, very macho guy, pumped up. And then all she does is she lifts the hand up. Right. What happens? Oh. So the trap that's huge with all the force that can knock this police woman is massive. But that power, that might, that force, that ability of the truck driver, of the merchant man, has to stop because authority vested, vested, are you all still here? I need your attention here, church. Is vested in what? In that small, petite place woman. Why? Because she's acting and she's backed by what? The authority. That is the understanding Jesus wants us to have. Now, in Luke 10, 19, he has given us the authority. 
but don't also forget in Acts 1 8, he also gave us the dynamism of God. So we have the exousia of God, the authority, that's that control, that dominion, and also we have the raw might, strength, power of God. So Satan is not a match for you. I hope you're getting this. Amen. I can change the topic, you know. You have to change the topic. I can change the topic to football, you know, Lingran losing like yesterday. Should we go there or we should stay here? Stay here, right? How it came. Come on. All right. Let's stay here. I, I was reading this and I'm just thinking, you know, how does this apply to you? But then I thought, how does this apply to me? I'll view this well for my own sake. And the church of God, sometimes my heart believe for the church because. We've not come to the place of God's word, amen. We've not come to the place where we are functioning by these revelational truths of God's word. This is the life we call to. Christianity is not one of those religions. Christianity is the life of God manifested in the human flesh. It's the life, listen, what makes God God is what has been put in your heart. We call it the Zoe of God, the supernatural life of God. And he has come to reside in you. So this morning, I'll just declare and say, God, you live on the inside of me. You know, and I'm still going to preach because your powers are preached. Their voice will get clearer. So the reason why they was broken is, you know, and at times, you know, I, don't, I don't know how people are going to manage in hell. Because I cannot, I can't deal with too much heat. You know, when it's very cold and they blast the heater, and I get closer to the heat, it will just go through me and it will just break my voice. So I don't know how they're going to survive in there, but hey, it's their choice. We're going to do our best to get them out of it. But anyway, even though there's irritation, my God can still heal it. And you understand? Amen. Amen. And is that power, that authority, is over all the power of the enemy, including, including, including witchcraft. Hey, be careful, don't say that, don't say that, don't say that, don't say that. At times we behave as though the devil is so powerful more than God. Even in the house of God, even in God's house, the demons are causing havoc. The witches are doing that, they're doing that. What would the church of God rise up? Hey, did you see when Daniel was cast in the lion's den? The lions were, these are young lions in their prime, but they dare not touch Daniel. Why? Because their jaw, their fangs were locked up. So who cares what the devil is doing? Who cares where the devil is? God is, God is in you and he's with you and he's upon you. Come on, church. When, but we need to rise up in this power. We need to rise up in this authority. I was listening to a very dear man as a prophet of God, very powerful. And then there's a lady who was attacked by a demonic force. And so as he was ministering to that woman, he was um, detailing the cause of that, of that attack. And yes, that's what happened. But I was just thinking, what, how can these things happen? But they can't happen because he says, my people perish. My people are destroyed. My people are crushed. Because the devil is powerful? Because heaven is shut up with the power? Because we've used so much power since uh, Genesis chapter 1 and it's going down? Less store enough power because it's energy crisis? Why? Because lack of war. So many things do happen to us not because the devil is powerful. For example, you know, the third world war like Africa, for example, Wallowing in, in poverty and in struggle. Now, just thinking, it's not enough just to hold a prayer and fasting retreat to break the power of the devil over Africa so that Africa will, will rise up strength in prosperity. No, that's not what Africa needs. What Africa needs is the teaching of the principles of God's kingdom in regards to life, in regards to management, in regards to prosperity, 
That's what we need. So that we can, and that's what the Western world did. You see, they used the Christians' level. When you see all these church buildings around, what do you think they build them for? For decoration? For historical references? No. Sundays were literally locked up. You dare not, you have to go to church. Because that's how they train them. So the average, average European, especially here in Great Britain, they may not fear God, but they have what? Manners. Average, right? So they even, for example, I remember one time, you know, I was, I was um, coming from work, and there's a lady who was climbing down the stairs, and then she slipped, and then she fell down. And then this uh, guy just came, oh, hello, sweetheart. Are you okay? You know, and then he tried to help her. And funny enough, his response, I would say to my shame, was much more um, of love than me, the pastor. Why? Because maybe I might be so, oh, I, mean, I don't know, why, why do you have to sleep? But you see, it's ingraining them the basic manners of life, helping people, being good, obviously the average one. What I'm saying is we need the truth of God's word, the principle of God's kingdom. And then when these teachings come in the house of God and comes to we walk in the light of it. There are many things that the enemy is doing, not because he's powerful, it's because we walk in the more ignorance or in unbelief or in fear. But you have to rise up in the truth of God's word. Run if I say we should pray. I said, let's pray for Iraq, you know, for Ukraine and Russia, the war. Let's pray that it will die down. I know many of us will pray, but I will know the volume and intensity of that prayer. You know how it goes like? Okay, Russia, we pray for Russia, we pray for Ukraine, but let your peace rule, let your peace reign. Oh, yes, we pray for Putin, all of that. Great. And then let's pray for the sick, or even let's pray for the NHS. That, you know, these people are be, at the moment they're going to a lot of um, struggle. Let's pray that God's grace, God's wisdom will resolve everything. And then you all pray. But when I say, let's pray against the devil <laughs> regarding, you know, what he plans to do with you at the end, the end of this year. Oh, boy. Some assaulting. Everyone will get up. And then you jump, you roll. I, I, I don't know if you've seen it, but I've actually seen um. Now, this is funny, but it's true. So this prayer service going on. I don't know why, but come on, they came to church for war. Because the pastor was dressed up in a military attire. And then he, uh, for some reason, I don't know why, he had a gun. I, I know it's a toy gun, it had to be. But then that day of prayer, it was that brrr, bullets everywhere. Oh, God. Why? Because. We've seen the death. Now, I'm not making a light of the reality of Satan. No. You know, he's real. There is a devil, amen? You cannot, <coughs> you cannot deny the reality of the devil. But then what we need to know is he's there, but there's a greater God who lives on the inside of us. And regardless of what he says, what he does, if we can learn to walk in love, and learn to walk in faith, and learn to walk by the word of God. You put the devil always at his place. Who knows the, the, the address of the devil? Do you know where the devil lives? Under your feet. But many of you, you are, the devil is under your feet, and then he shakes himself. <laughs> no. When he shakes himself, the devil, get back to where you belong. That's your house. Stay there. Under where? Your feet. And you do that by what? By faith. Praise God. See, faith is a lifestyle. And faith is the life of the Christian. You're called to live by faith. You have to train yourself to live by faith. Amen. You see, me standing here preaching, I'm doing that by faith. I'm telling you, in the morning, it was worse. Because if I was speaking to my mama, they couldn't even hear me. It would have been very, very easy to call Pastor Aaron as a pastor Aaron, please step in for me, you see. But then I need to train and build my faith. What about when the devil attacks you with cancer? You couldn't fight off the, the broken voice because it's still of the, of the heat that you know, went into you. 
how much more a much more severe force. So, so we have to train ourselves in our faith walk. And is what? Is a walk. So you will stumble, you fall down. What do you do? Get up and get going. And then just when you see in my dream at the early stage of my Christian walk, when that force that will come upon me and I have to get up from my bed and then, you know, speak words of faith over and over again. But then I said it got to the point where in my dream, I was the one doing what? Doing the chasing. Because why? Is a walk, a life of faith. So I give you the authority. The authority. The authority. It says to trample. Trample. It says it means to, to tread upon. It means to crush. It means to grind. And I love this word, to pulverize. He says you have the ability to finish up the devil. Of course, of his works, right? Because, you know, the time is, is not nigh for the devil to be forever be destroyed. But whilst on earth, we have the authority to put the devil where he belongs. Amen. So that means that we need to function in life with this understanding. And I'm praying for the church of God to come to the place where we know that wherever we go, we have the authority. In our community, we are in charge. When I say we are in charge, we are in charge spiritually. So, oh, they are territorial spirits. Who cares who they are? Oh, the reason why people are not coming to church, the reason why there are you know, suicide, you know, a lot of events, um, um, episodes in this, in this community. The reason why, you know, that this, you know, all these are sexual immorality in this community because, you know, that, yes, it's been known for years that territorial spirits and they are in the heavens, they have, they've been ruling upon Europe, upon this community, this city for, for, for time. And who cares who they are? The church of God has to rise up. Amen. Amen. And I'm looking for a church of God that's so ready to live the Christian life. Yeah. Because if not, our gospel just be in words. And of late, I'm actually, I'm concerned, not very concerned, because it looks like our generation, I'm talking about this particular generation, the message of the word of God coming forth, I don't hear it regarding my generation. So on social media, the message I'm hearing is like, is it how we're going to receive the second coming of Christ? Very, no, 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 no. There's much for us to accomplish in this end time. But that means you and I need to rise up. So if God sent you to a place, even as a church or as a family, know that you are the one in charge. You are in charge spiritually. So yes, there are demonic spirits there. They've been ruling. Yes, they've been there. But then we said, no. God sent us this community for such a time like this. And so we're going to change the spiritual climate of this region. And so what do we do? See, we arm ourselves with this truth, with this scripture. And then we get praying. And we, we walk in faith, we declare words of faith. Not only that, we begin to also come up with ideas and strategies that will address the problem. Many a time we, we, we stop our prayer. Our prayer alone will not do it. We need to reach out and address those problems head on. So if it's a region where there's so much homelessness, we pray, we address it. Because I, for me, I don't get it. How come? I don't know. Someone who, you know, if it's a native of the land, you know, and then is raining, and he's at the train station begging for arms, and then he's sleeping. I, I don't get it. It's demonic, of course. So then we don't, don't pray. We need to come up with what? ideas, with strategies, and address those problems. It doesn't matter what the problem is. The answer is where in the church. So for me, when I see any issue in the community, in the nation, my first, my first response is, where is the church in this? Because it's the church is what? The light of the world. It's the world of darkness. 
It's a world of sinners. But it says, we have been sent here as what? The saviors of the world. So it's not just enough to point fingers and blame them, or these sinners, these folk, these people. No, we need to rise up in love, rise up in faith in the word, and reach out to them. Even now in Europe, I just looked at last week, the number of people who profess to be Christians is going down, you know. And initially I was like, ooh, that's bad. But then I'm like, no, it's not bad. That's why I was born for such a time like this. That means there's the problem. And if the church of God will rise up, it means, as an evangelist, come on, if you're a doctor and everyone is well and no one is sick, in as much as you are happy and you be a lazy doctor, all right? It means, but then your, 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 your functional purpose is, 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 is void, right? Because you are a doctor to, to look out for the sick. So if we say we are pastors, we have been sent, we are, are God's soul winners, and then in, in our world today, people say they don't do God. Well, that's what you're here. So it's not enough just to pray, though. We need to come up, come up with practical, intentional strategies of how to address the problem. The problem with the church is we are not using what we have. Amen. We are not using what we have. We're not using the power. So he says we have the authority, the exousia of God. And we have the dynamism of God. So what else do we need? All we have to do is just, just be bold, be practical, and just step out. Step out. So whatever you're doing, whatever God sent you in your family. So that means in your family, you have the final say, not the devil. Do you know that in some families, they say in some families, the men don't, hello, nephew, you're making noise. Is that my nephew there? How many, in some families, in, in some families, the men don't live past 60? You know, it's happened before. Or in some families, the women don't get married. Or in some families, the women don't give birth. These are things that have been going on. In this, oh, yeah, grandma was struggling and that. But then God brings you up in that family for such a time like this. And he says, Savior shall come out of Mount Zion. You know, Jesus is not the only Savior. Do you know that? He is the Savior. But he wasn't made a Savior. So when the Bible says, Jesus is the King of Kings. And the Lord of Lords. And so, oh, yes, he's the king of all the kings of the earth, all the monarch system. No, no, no. That is lesser truth. When the Jesus is king of kings, well, do you remember when he said he has made us a kingdom of priests? So we are royal priesthood. So we are kings and priests. So when said Jesus is king of kings, he's the king of the kings of the church. Amen. You and I. Meaning we rule and reign with him. He doesn't rule alone. We rule and reign with him. Jesus doesn't rule and reign alone, church. That's why he sent us to this world to establish his kingdom in the earth. So we look at heaven, say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, as it is. So then we have to look at heaven. What is the kingdom of God looks like in heaven? What's the culture of heaven? How do we get to know? By assumption? By cooking up something? How do we get to know the culture of heaven? The word. So you find out the word it says, it's a kingdom of divine health. You know, uh, this morning before I, was, I came to church, I was listening to one of these political shows on BBC, and they're talking about the struggle and the challenge of the NHS. And it looks like it will get to a point, the NHS will not be fully free. It looks like it will be a reform at some point. Obviously, more people coming to the country People are living longer as well, with all the strain. And it will be a shame 
Because I think NHS is one of the wonderful system ever on earth, free medical um, system. And you're looking at, you know, how do they address it and all of that. Obviously, some people have their own ulterior motive as well. Anyway, but then this is the system of man. And they want to come up with reforms and ideas to, to get things running as it should. I was just thinking, has the King of God got any, any system that is to deal with my health and your health? Or God sits up in heaven and doesn't care how I feel, the pain I'm going through, the headache, and they say, oh, don't worry, you got a headache. Just enjoy the headache on earth. Don't worry, you get to heaven and you don't need to, uh, be, you know, you don't need to worry about any sickness in heaven. No, that kingdom come. So in heaven, there's no sickness. So then God has shown us in his word, heaven's kingdom health care system. See, there's a health care system of God in God's kingdom. And it's fully described in this book. But we need to know how to access it. Here you are, you have a medical condition, and he stays in your room. Oh, I'm not well. Mm. They say there's an NHS. All right, if there's an NHS, and it's okay that I get well, let the doctor come to me. I'm not going to call anyone. I'm not going to make any phone call. I'm not going to come out of my room. I'm not well. NHS is free. And then the doctor comes to you. Is that the case? What, what do you do? You have to access it. We have to access all that God has given to us. But in, in accessing it, you need to know how to walk, access it. You don't just show up to the GP and expect him to do what a surgeon is meant to do on you, right? So you need to know how the system works, and then you are appropriate. Now, I'm, my heart believes for a church of God that, uh, now, this is my heart desire. My desire is the church of God gets to a place amongst us when someone is sick, they come to church. Oh, but I've, I've not been well all week. Oh, is that the case? Just lay your hands on me and I'll be healed. So I lay hands and you're healed. That's one. Or you're not well. You come to church. He said, when we are worshiping God, as I lift up my hands, by the time when it's over, I'll be healed. You see, another way of accessing it. Or you say, I don't even need to get to church. I have the word of God. I have the scriptures that cause my healing. You see, so, but the point is, when you think you received and it's not fully manifested, you think you didn't get it. So if I'm to be here thinking, hmm, I thought God has healed me. Look at this crooked voice. They can't even hear me now. And me pity old me. No. As far as I know, I'm healed. Praise God. And I know it's completely restored. Now, the manifestation can be a process. But many of us give up during the process. But you have to stay on with God. And that healing, it says, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You see, it will happen. Don't give up as you're going through that recovery process. Because God's word will surely will come to pass. Will surely come to pass. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The believer's authority. If you can learn to function in life with this authority. Now, it goes over every spectrum of your life. Over your finances. You see? So there's a system there as well that deals with your finances. How does God want you to regulate your finances? All spelled out in the word. Over your children. Here you are, your son is, you know, he's having struggle among his friends. Now he's working among gangs and he's doing stuff that he's meant to do, you know, and your life, you're praying and you're crying, oh my son, is he going to end up dead? Look at what the Bible says about your sons and your daughter. And use the word. It says, he will save you and your household. And then there's a word, there's, there's, a, there's a young boy who um, is having struggle at school, doing all sorts of stuff. 
So I spoke to the parent um, last Sunday, actually. And then the grandma was just um, telling how mom has been crying. And, you know, to them, it looks like all hope is gone. So I, go, I, go, I went to the house and I spoke to him. And then I gave him a scripture, uh, Psalm 91. And I gave it to mom as well. And I said, this is what the enemy is doing. But let's focus on what God is doing and has done. And then the last time I heard of him, he's engaging with the word of God and he's praying. And I know in no time, because even as I was ministering to him, God said he's going to be a minister to the youth. You see, the enemy wants to distort and corrupt the grace of God upon his life. But even in the midst of that, God will use that to train him, give him a message, give him the testimony, and then give him the experience to be a blessing more unto others. If only we can receive what God has given us. And when the enemy is moving about and is causing havoc, we don't give him, we don't let fear and um, worry, anxiety take over our hearts and our minds. But we still focus on the word of God and keep declaring that as a child of God, as a believer of Christ, I have the authority and the power of God over the devil, over sickness, over pain, over circumstances, over nature. And I'm a king and I'm ruling and reigning. Praise God. Let's shout amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We bless your name. We receive your truth. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the voice you've given to the church. And we pray that this voice will echo throughout our communities, our cities, our nations, and bring the kingdom of God amongst men. I receive your word. And even as we walk in your authority, as we walk in your power, we are enforcing our victories, our glories, your joy, your peace, in every area of our lives. And we thank you that Jesus is on the throne and is ruling and reigning with your church. And the kingdom of God is shining forth all around the world. And the power of the enemy has been broken. We pray for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Church, a big amen. amen. A big amen. amen. Just put your hands on the pastors and say, God bless you. There's a few points that he made that were quite salient that I just want to quickly touch upon because we're living in a realm where demonic activity is ramping up. And, it, and people say, don't mention the demonic. You know, when you come to church, you just have to tell you people how you're going to be rich. You know, I tell you people you can do it. That, that, that's the type of preaching you want to hear. But the demonic is real and it is moving and blowing throughout this whole earth and the spirit of if it feels good do it just do it uh, and the demonic is taking over even in that even in many families in the house of god but the demonic is a real thing jesus saw it fit to speak about the realm of the demonic consistently and it's very very interesting the bible says as the pastor said today that he's given you authority over demons and diseases he's given you authority and his and authority is given so god has given you authority if somebody comes to, to for me to pray to them i know god has given me that authority i said look it's done go because he's given you that authority now every believer if you believe in god here there's something that you should have jesus was walking about on this earth and they said something to jesus they said who has given you this authority to do these things they didn't like jesus they had no love for him. Eventually, they strung him up on a tree. But they asked him a question. They said, who is giving you this authority? So this should be a question that everybody asks you, whether you've been a believer for one minute, ten years, whatever. People should ask you this question. They should, even if they like you or do not like you, on this surf, they need to recognize your authority. They need to recognize the authority that God has given you. Every believer needs to understand that. Whether it's on your job, whether it's, whether it's when you go into engagement with demonic realm, they need to understand. Now, he mentioned something. You have authority. 
Now, it's a sad state of affairs when you, God has given you something and you don't use it. There was a man that was on a cruise ship and, and, and he paid, he saved up. You know, some people save up and spend everything on holiday, hallelujah, and they come back and it's a problem, hallelujah. And sometimes you don't even enjoy the holiday because you're thinking, I can't buy this, I can't buy this. Is it, you're 20 pounds, uh, no, 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 I can't, I just have to, I have to, I have to carve it down. You're sweating while you're on the holiday, hallelujah. Have you ever been there? And it's interesting, it, 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 it is so deep that this man brought an all-inclusive ticket for, which included food, drink, I know none of you here drink alcohol, but I'm talking about those outside. But it was food, drink, everything. It was all inclusive in his ticket. But you know what the man didn't realize? He didn't realize that his ticket was all inclusive. So when it was dinner time, the man's hiding in his room with digestive biscuits and water. Hallelujah. True story. So he brought some biscuits, with the cupboard, the cupboard, somebody you knows some of you pack your suitcase with uh, f- foods from Waitrose, not Waitrose, Lidl's and Aldi's and all them things there, hallelujah. And he was hiding in his room while everyone was tucking into food, breakfast. You know, some of us, when it's all inclusive, we overeat just to get our money's worth, hallelujah. Come on, yeah, you know when you do that, just to get your money's worth. Well, it's free, I want to get my money's worth, so let me overeat. Come on, come on, speak the truth, somebody. Hallelujah. You want to get your money's worth. Some of you even take containers for takeaway. And what happened is, he was hiding in his room, and he was not eating, because he didn't understand that his ticket was all-inclusive. Then one day, after five days, some man said, what are you doing in here? What's going on? He goes, I can't afford to eat. The man said, it's included in your ticket. He didn't understand. So sometimes God has given you the authority in your ticket. It's all given to you. Hallelujah. He's given it to you. And some of us were hiding in our room, but the authority has already been given to you. 2023, God has spoken to me clearly. It's a year of spiritual warfare. The whole year we will fight and we will win. And if you're not ready to fight, you'll be overdue. 2023 is, is a time where the forces of hell shall be unleashed. And we should be ready to fight. But we already have the authority. The Bible says Jesus made a public spectacle of all the uh, principal powers and wicked spirits. So we have authority. So let's walk in it in 2023. And let's deal with that in our lives. Before we dedicate...